every once in a while I'll write down a bunch of video ideas uh, just to give me some idea of what I want to do for the next month or so. So let's see, what do we want to talk about today? Uh, Lumix S52X, editing portraits, being boring is boring. Is that anything? Oh, here's one, uh, shooting BTS. Let's do that. What's up, y'all? My name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I primarily shoot portraits, but I also do some weddings, I do events, and I do a lot of BTS. BTS, if you don't know, stands for behind the scenes. It basically means that I am documenting what's happening on set or at a given event or anything like that for people who are creating content for that event. For example, the next few days is Canada Photo Summit here in Waterloo, Ontario. Very cool event for wedding photographers or any photographers who, who want to learn more and, and learn from some just incredibly talented photographers and business people. I'm going to be shooting BTS for it. So that just means I'm going to have a camera in my hand all the time, snapping lots of photos, getting video, just trying to capture the energy of the event and the environment. I'm doing this for Taylor Jackson. He is a local photographer here. You probably know him. He is very big on this platform and amazing photographer, really kind person. And I reached out to see if they wanted any BTS for the event. And he said, yes. So that's cool. So now I get to do that. This is going to be crazy. We're listen, we, we got to put a hat on one sec. All right, sweet. That's better. I am going to be less distracted now by my hair. So there's a couple things I want to talk about when it comes to shooting BTS and some best tips for getting better BTS for people. First and foremost, how do you get a job shooting BTS? Well, you ask for it. It's really simple. Actually, it's one of the easiest ways to get an opportunity to work with somebody is to offer something to them, right? If you want to learn from somebody, one of the best ways you can do that is by seeing their process. And the best way to get access to seeing that is to offer to do BTS. It's really simple. Everybody needs content all the time now. And if you can actually provide a service to them in exchange for getting something from them, it's just, it's a, it's a much nicer way to work with somebody rather than just saying like, Hey, can I shadow you sometime? Which is also cool. I mean, a lot of people will say yes to that, but if you can say like, hey, I love your work. I would really like to do some BTS for you sometime if you have any need. You're way more likely to get an opportunity than if you just go asking for something. What's nice about this is it is a much more give and take. Like you are offering something valuable to them and they're offering something valuable back. I would say like at least 50% of the BTS work I do is for free right now. And that's because I am reaching out to people who I really want to learn from and I'm asking them to shoot BTS for them. I'm not asking them to pay me. A lot of times they'll offer, which is super cool and great and I appreciate it. It helps pay my bills, but it's not an expectation. For me, what I'm getting out of shooting BTS is I'm also getting content I can share on my channel, but I'm getting the opportunity to work with like-minded individuals and learn from them. Every time I've shot BTS for somebody, I've learned something from their process or from the people around them, or I've built connections, or I've just shown who I am and, and I've gotten the opportunity to, to connect with people on like a human level, which is also just super important. Find some creators in your local area, people that you think are cool and interesting and just, just offer, see what they say, you never know. Okay, so quick technical stuff when it comes to BTS. It's very simple. You need a camera, you need a lens. I would say you need a microphone and that's pretty much it. My go-to would be something like a 24 to 70 lens because it's just really versatile. Yeah, it's a boring lens, but it's very useful and it just allows you to change on the fly. When it comes to audio, I would say there's kind of two options. One would be to just have like a simple shotgun mic, like the Rode Video Micro is probably enough for what you're doing if it's just BTS. Or, you know, if you want to laugh somebody because you really want to hear specifically what one person is saying, like let's say they're shooting a portrait session and they want to be able to show how they communicate with couples, you're going to want to lav them. So you could either just use like a lav plugged into the Rode Wireless Go. That's a really easy way to do it. You could also just use one of those little clip on kind of microphones. Like there's a million different versions of it. It comes down to whether or not they're okay with having that microphone being seen. Usually for BTS stuff, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you have a camera that shoots open gate, that's really nice because then you can just crop for various needs and, and that's helpful for people too. So that's sort of the technical side. Uh, beyond that, um, really it just comes down to style of shooting and that's something that we'll get into here. Best practices for shooting BTS. There's a few really key things. The first one is figure out the intended use for the BTS. If they want to use it for a YouTube video versus if they want to use it for reels or something like that, you're going to shoot a little bit differently. You're also going to focus on different things depending on what they're shooting. So if they really want to capture BTS because they have a super cool lighting setup they're doing for this video or they're making a commercial and they really want to show like the technical side, like how they set everything up, how they flagged lights, how they ran their audio, all that 
that's the kind of stuff that you want to capture. But if they want to show more of like the human side of things, if they want to show how they're directing talent, if they want to show how they're using their camera and how they're communicating, you're going to focus a little more on them and a little less on the set and the surrounding area. So I would say for BTS, like have a quick, quick chat with them and just say like, hey, what are you hoping to get out of this? Just let me know what your what your needs are and I'll make sure I capture that. When you're getting the sort of low down from them too, I would ask them if they're planning on doing any slow-mo stuff, if they want you to capture stuff in 60 frames per second. So just ask really quickly, what frame rates do you want me to shoot in? Do you want some slow motion stuff? Is that helpful for this? A lot of times for BTS, like slow-mo is really not gonna be super useful unless they're doing like a specific thing. So just, yeah, keep that in mind too. Okay, the second thing I would say is shoot wide shoot just a little wider than you think you need and the reason for that is so that you can crop more easily if you have an open gate camera that's awesome because then you can crop more easily but just in general shoot in 4k and shoot a little bit wide that's going to allow them to crop in where they need to and that'll just make their lives easier when they're going to edit it or if you're editing it'll make your life easier too so just shoot a little wider and the other thing is that like you want the footage to look as professional as possible so if you're going wider you're just gonna have less likelihood i would say of getting like camera shake and stuff like that it's just going to make for some crispier nicer images next hold your shots and run your camera for longer the amount of times that i've shot either for myself or for other people where i wish i just had an extra like three seconds of clean footage is frustrating and i have to remember that all the time and it's like continually i just tell myself like if i think that that i've captured what i need add five seconds. There's no, there's no need to shoot less than like 20 seconds for anything. So if I'm, even if I'm just like trying to show like a lighting setup or something, I'll just hold it because let's say they want to do like a, a voiceover or something. You want enough length of like a steady, consistent shot that they can do that voiceover and get across what they need. If they have to cut a bunch of things together, cause you're not capturing enough. I just, I think it's frustrating. And when you end up in the editing room, you get frustrated by that. And if you're not somebody who does a lot of editing, you might not know that. So just hold your shots for longer, hold static shots for longer, let conversations fully breathe. Like if you're capturing dialogue and stuff, let everything come to its natural end and, and, and just wait a second to make sure. Yeah, it'll take up a little more storage, but honestly, it's just like so much more latitude in editing and I think it's way, way easier. The other thing I would say is like, don't just focus on one person or one thing. Now, if you're doing BTS for somebody and they want you to capture like BTS of a wedding day showing how I direct couples, that's pretty straightforward. And, and it would be really easy to just be like, I'm gonna focus on everything you say and cut to the couples a bit, but really focusing on you. But if, if they're trying to build a whole narrative Remember that like that's going to be used for like promotional material. You want to get detailed shots. You want to get some wider shots. You want to show them with the couple being personable and being friendly as well as some like more specific direction shots. You want to show the wedding itself a little bit because there's no point in just showing them in like isolation. You need to give context. So it's like that classic rule where you're getting like a wide, medium and tight shot for everything you kind of want to think of that with BTS too. So you want to get like wider shots of things so you can establish the setting, you know, more medium shots and then tighter shots, but not just of people of like things and details and all the stuff that you would normally shoot for yourself if you were making like a wedding video, but just keeping in mind that it's okay to show the photographer. It's okay to show like it's being used for that reason. Now that's BTS for video, but what about photo? I would say that 99% of what I said still stands. You want to shoot wider. Uh, you want to get a mix of different shots. You want to capture lots of different things. You want details. You want to tell the story. Uh, the, the other quick thing I would say is that for me, when I do BTS photography, and this is just a stylistic choice. I always shoot raw and JPEG, but generally speaking for, for BTS, I am shooting in a black and white setting. So all my JPEGs are in black and white. You don't have to do that. It's just something I like to do, but I do find that like that lends to the documentary nature of shooting BTS. So if I can shoot in black and white, I can just get those images, you know, out to them right away. They have something really cool. It's just a stylistic approach, but give it a shot and see what you think. Uh, the other thing is make sure that you're not getting too caught up in yourself. And this is really important, whether you're shooting photo or you're shooting video, you're there to capture BTS. Your job is important, of course, because people want BTS, but it's not as important as everything else. So stay out of the way, 
make yourself useful. And just because you're shooting BTS doesn't mean you can't help, right? So if you're shooting BTS, but they need help moving stuff, put down your camera for a second and help them move something. Like it's not the end of the world. You don't need to capture every single second of BTS. You're better off being the person who's like assisting and helping and being like a kind, generous human being while capturing BTS. And that's going to get you a lot further. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that made sense. Get out there, shoot some BTS for some people. It is such a great way to get to know people and to offer something of value. I can't tell you how many like good friendships and contacts I've made now just because I reached out and I said like, hey, do you want some BTS? So ask people. I mean, I, I wish people were asking me because I am like constantly filming stuff and going on shoots and stuff and I never have any BTS because I'm either the one shooting it for people or I don't have anyone to lean on in my side. So if you all want to shoot BTS for me and you live in Baden, Ontario, you don't. No one does. We're the only people here. Peace.